And I'm on Instagram, Biology and Medicine videos. Please make sure to subscribe, join the forum and group for the latest videos. Please visit Facebook on Instagram. Please like and you can also ask questions. Answer questions, I post some interesting things, including your artworks. You can also change the quality settings to the highest one for better graphics. This video, we're going to look at inflammation as well as the inflammatory response. So what is inflammation? Well, inflammation is the sum of the host's defenses to infectious or noxious stimuli. One of the major aims of inflammation is to bring defense cells, immune cells, to the area of concern, as well as to inactivate or destroy any invaders, pathogens, and to, uh, and to also begin repair in that area. Inflammation is clinically denoted by the suffix itis. So, for example, dermatitis is inflammation of the skin. Arthritis is inflammation of the joint. Let's look at inflammation in a bigger picture by looking at a map and see what happens when there is, for example, damage done to our skin and what sort of inflammatory response occurs. So inflammation. Here is the surface of our skin, a tissue, and we have the submucosa region underneath. Of course, below all this, we have blood vessels, many blood vessels. Here, I'm only drawing one blood vessel for simplicity. However, of course, we actually have many blood vessels around the area connecting to each other. And then we also have lymphatic vessels here, um, which are important for immune cells to move around in, particularly the lymphocytes. The lymph vessels all connect to what's called a lymph node or other um, organs such as a uh, spleen. Within the lymph node, if there is no infection or infiltration or inflammation, we have the naive cells, naive lymphocytes, known as the B and T cells. Within the blood vessels, we have many types of cells and many types of pro plasma proteins, etc. We have erythrocytes, which are the red blood cells. We have monocytes. We have neutrophils, which are phagocytes. And because we're talking about inflammation, we have also circulating in the blood vessel inflammatory mediators. It is important to know that there are two types of inflammatory mediators in general. The two types are the plasma inflammatory mediators, which means that these plasma are the ones that are circulating inflammatory mediators. And these are the cobalt proteins and the kinins. They are made by the liver and they circulate with, with the blood vessel and are activated upon inflammation. The other type of inflammatory mediator is a cell-derived inf inflammatory mediator, meaning that they come from cells. And we'll talk about them soon enough. Now, the cells that we find within the tissue or within the surface of the skin or beneath the skin are what's known as mast cells. Mast cells contain histamine granules. And here we have another mast cell. Now, mast cells are really important cells um, to promote inflammation because histamine, histamine, histamine is a cell-derived inflammatory mediator. Now, other cells we find around this um, tissue are phagocytes, tissue macrophages, for example, as well as dendritic cells. Because we're talking about the skin, these dendritic, skull, these dendritic cells are known as Langerhans cells, and, this, and they're all around here. So now that we've got the basics um, on the map here, what happens during an injury? For example, a cut here. Well, blood will start going out because of the surrounding blood vessels. Now, it's important to note that there is no step-by-step -step process in inflammation. It's usually one off one happening with each other or something like that. So what can happen is that during this injury, a pathogen will infiltrate the body and come into the tissue. This pathogen, let's just say, is a bacteria will trigger many responses, particularly by the surrounding cells, first of all. So what happens is that this bacteria actually expresses certain proteins, certain molecules on its surface, known as 
PAMP. PAMP is recognized by the immune cells. They are recognized by the immune cells within the tissue, such as mast cells and macrophages. Once the mast cells recognizes this pathogen, or recognizes that a pathogen has, in, has infiltrated the body, it will secrete the histamine it has stored in the granules. Histamine, when secreted, will cause vasodilation and increase vascular permeability. So here we have the blood vessels increasing in vascular permeability, meaning the endothelial cells contract, allowing small gaps to form, as well as the blood vessel will dilate, vasodilation, which will increase blood flow, meaning that more immune cells can come inside the inflamed tissue. Because, it, because the blood vessels are permeable, these immune cells in the blood vessel can migrate to the inflamed tissue or the site of infiltration or injury. The migration process or immigration process is known as diapodesis. And I have a video on that. Now what else could happen during this inflammation process? Well, the macrophages which recognize the PAMP of the pathogen will also secrete cytokines. Cytokines is also an inflammatory mediator. The macrophages will secrete cytokines, particularly cytokines TNF-alpha, tumor necrosis factor alpha, and interleukin-1. These cytokines will cause a local effect and a systemic effect. The local effect being inflammation, which is vasodilation and increase in vascular permeability. The cytokines will also trigger or cause tissue repair by activating or stimulating fibroblast activity. Now, the cytokine systemic effect include a fever, so becoming hot, as well as leukocytosis, meaning the accumulation essentially of white blood cells uh, circulating within the blood vessel and is usually, uh, and it usually happens during an inflammatory response. So anyway, the cytokines will essentially also promote uh, the immigration of these immune cells from the blood vessels into the inflamed tissue, such as a neutrophil and monocytes. When the monocytes actually move from the blood vessel into the tissue, the monocytes will become macrophages. So within the blood vessel, or while it's circulating, they are known as monocytes. But once they enter tissues, they are known as macrophages. So let's talk about repair too. As I mentioned, the cytokines TNF-alpha and interleukin-1, the local effects it causes is repair. How does it do this?